Now in this video, you're going to learn how to eliminate the triggers or things you say and how you say them that are actually causing you to get rejected by your prospects. Now let's take a look at the cause of rejection real quick. Because before we can start really looking at seven figure sales training as a possible solution, wouldn't you agree that it's important to really explore and identify the cause of the problem in the first place? Why is that? Because once we understand what's causing us to get rejected, it will give you a better idea of what you can do about it to eliminate those triggers that are causing the issue. Let me ask you, is it true, and be honest, that most salespeople bring up their solution or tell people how they can help them far too early when they're talking to their prospects? And then what happens? They get turned down, they get rejected, right? So if you are getting rejected, who's actually causing that? Well, of course, you are. You see, traditional selling has trained us to bring up how we can help our prospects far too early when we're talking to them, which automatically triggers our prospects to reject us because we don't explore what's behind their problems. We don't even spend enough time finding out what's causing those problems and more importantly, how it's affecting them personally. We all have our opinions and answers about things and we all think ours is the right one for everyone else. Just think about your political beliefs or your religious beliefs. We all think we're right. So we quickly come up with our solutions to our prospects' problems as we interpret them based on our own experiences. Here's the problem with that though. When we as salespeople provide a quick solution without finding out the history of our potential customers' problems, we're in complete danger of offering the wrong solution or even unconsciously offending people because we haven't involved them in the conversation. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. If you went to a doctor and let's say complained of pain in your back and your doctor came in without asking you any questions or even examining you, he or she wrote you a prescription and told you to go to the drugstore for some drugs. How would you feel about your doctor? Probably not that convinced, right? The reason is, is the doctor did not involve you in that process. Have you considered that you'd be doing the exact same thing if you go into your sales pitch and your solutions too early in the sales conversation? You see, when you tell someone about what you have and how they should do it because it will improve their life and not only that, your company has the greatest customer service and you have the lowest prices and your company has the best ratings and you have the best this and the best that and you know it's going to be good for them, whose point of view does it appear that you're focused on? Yours, of course. And how about when you use those closing techniques? Whose agenda and whose point of view are you focusing on? Yours. And what about when you use your objection handling techniques? Whose agenda are you focused on again? Yours. Let me ask you, are your potential prospects interested in your agenda or what you think they should do? Mostly not. Not even if we have the best interest at our hearts. How many times have you seen someone close to you have great need of your product or service that you sell, but they won't even listen to you because you've told them what they should do. Why is that? Because most people are not interested in being told or persuaded that you have the right solution for them. Salespeople come to me every day because they're frustrated because they honestly believe their products can help their prospects, but they can't seem to get their potential customers to believe that. Why? Well, it appears that the very thing salespeople want their prospects to do, which is to listen to them, is the very thing they don't do themselves. They spend so much time uh, attempting to tell and convince and persuade, and not enough time just asking questions and listening. The truth is, it doesn't matter what you think about your product or your solution. It only matters what your potential customer thinks. Let me give you another example. If you're like most salespeople who make cold calls or call leads, you're of course hoping to make a sale or at least make an appointment before you pick up that phone. The problem is your potential customers you call get calls every day from salespeople who are also trying to make a sale just like you are.
So they're used to this and they've evolved and they've built up, you know, sayings or defenses to get rid of you. So when you're only focused on your agenda of making a sale, do you think your prospects can feel that from you? And when they feel you're only calling them or trying to make an appointment with them so you can make a sale, do you think they trust you? What do they usually do 95% of the time? They say, I'm not interested. We don't need that. We don't have the budget for that. We already have that service. I'm too busy to talk right now. Let me think it over. Let me talk to my partners. Let me talk to my spouse. Can you call me back next week, next month, next year? But how do you think your potential customers would feel if you called them and you weren't really focusing on making the sale, but instead you were focused on whether there was a sale to be made in the first place and you detach yourself from the expectations of even making a sale? Do you think they would be more open to you? Do you think they'd be more honest with you? Do you think they would trust you more? You bet they would. Why? Because you're different than every salesperson they probably ever talked with. So try this. When you make your next call, think to yourself, I'm only going to call this person to find out if they have problems and if I can actually help them. I'm only going to focus on having a normal conversation. From this, a level of trust will start to form, which will allow a two-way dialogue between yourself and your prospect. When your focus shifts from making the sale and instead focusing on whether there's a sale to be made in the first place, you eliminate sales pressure. And when your prospect doesn't feel any sales pressure from you, what can happen? You can become a high six-figure and seven-figure income earner because they feel comfortable, open, and honest with you. I want to thank you for watching this video about how to eliminate the triggers or things you say and how you say them that actually cause you to get rejected by your prospects. Now in the next video, you're going to discover the difference between what average salespeople ask, what questions they use, compared to what a seven-figure salesperson actually asks and questions they use.